Hello there, I'm Richard Osman. Welcome back to my very well-appointed House of Games. All week I have four celebrities joining me, and one of them is going to win this magnificent trophy over there. One of them's going to win it on Friday. Who's playing this week? Let's meet them once again. They are Kate Humble, <laughs> Ivo Graham, Andy Oliver, and Phil Jupiter. Welcome, everybody. Wow. We take a little look at what happened yesterday. We look at the, uh, the leaderboard. Do we need to Kate. pick him up anymore? Just a little bit, just oh, a little bit, on, because we, we've got to bring him down today. Here's what happened yesterday. Andy, creditable fourth place. Kate, uh, you were third place. You get two points. I both three, and Phil one. He was good, right? What he are we going to do today? He was good. We're going to nail him today, though, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we've all agreed we're going to nail Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, did you did you know? Did you hear of this? There was, there, was, there was talk. It's very, very good fellas backstage, I have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Shall yeah. we take a look uh, at today's prizes? There better be some cheese. Oh. There, <laughs> there is no cheese, I'm afraid. What do we have there? We have a lovely apron, uh, gardening gloves there. We have a pillow, a scented candle <laughs> and a decanter. Oh. That's so yeah, generous. Yeah, exactly. and clever. If, if I might ask, Richard, what's the uh, the fragrance of On the, the House of Games candle? The fragrance of the House of Games candle is sandalwood and disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> Should we play our first round? Yes. It is. Ah, now, now. All I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Mm -hmm. right, you have to give me the answer, but you have to give me the answer in the past tense. So, for example, rather than give the answer Tom Cruise, you would have to say Tom Cruised. Great. OK? In for a penny, in for a pound? Yeah. Let's do it. Fingers on buzzers, everyone. Let's play a blast from the past tense. Here's your first question. According to legend, which Swiss folk hero was forced to shoot an arrow off his son's head? <laughs> Ivo. William Told. William told, William oh. Tell, William told. It's the right answer. Well done. Very Do you see how that works? William Tell, and in the past tense, it's William told. Uh, who is this, please? <laughs> yes, Ivo. Oh, that was so me. Oh, he doesn't know. I don't think it is actually, Daniel. No, it's it's, it's not. not I'm that. afraid. Oh, even Kate. <laughs> Jeremy Ironed. Jeremy Irons. Of course Yay. it is. There he is. Sorry. No one can Jeremy Irons right? in the past. Do you think it was Daniel Day-Lewis? Uh, can I... Yes, I buzzed because I was very sure it was Daniel Day-Lewis. And, and I realised... what's that in well, the we, past Well, you would say Daniel yesterday, Lewis. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> I Coming wish up I had in a More than anything show. else in the world, I wish yeah. I had. <laughs> what is the very answer good. to this, please? <laughs> Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze co-starred in which 1990 film? <laughs> Ivo. Ghosted. Is correct. It is ghosted. Well done. Here's your next one. There's not to reason why, there's but to do and die is a line from the Tennyson poem, The Charge of the What? <laughs> yes, Ivo. Lit Brigade. Is it the Charge of the Lit Brigade? <laughs> it is the Charge of the Lit Brigade. So you've got a proper education, haven't you? Ivo went to eat. Oh, no. Uh... Can you believe such a thing? You wouldn't know, because he's such a good guy. Yeah, <laughs> which is a school you that was in the past nice. tense. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It used to be called Eight, didn't it? <laughs> and, uh, here's your next one. The Horseshoe Falls and the American Falls are two parts of which famous waterfall? <laughs> yes, Kate. Niagara Fell. Is it Niagara Fell? It is indeed. Well played, Kate. Niagara Fell. Niagara Falls. The past tense is Niagara Fell. Are you getting this at home? Are you understanding this I better than I round. do? I'm, I'm this, loving this. This round has legs. Richard. Oh, good. It really does. <laughs> you mean this round had legs? Yeah. <laughs> Am I getting that right? <laughs> Here's your next question. Who is this, please? Ivo. I'm going to be really embarrassed if this is wrong, but I think it's Chris Waddled. Is it Chris Waddled? It is Chris Waddled. Well done. Chris Waddled, Chris Waddled. Here's your next one. What is the English title of Vivaldi's violin concerto in E major, La Primavera? That is Kate. Uh, sprung. It's the right answer, Spring. <laughs> the past sprung. That's quite a classy one to get, isn't it? Well, obviously Kate's got it, cos she works on Sprung Watched. <laughs> 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 Sprung watch with Chris Pacton. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can do this with everything. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your final question in this round. 
Which children's book by Morris Sendak is about a boy called Max who wears a wolf suit? <laughs> Phil. Where the wild things were. Where the wild things were, is that right? <laughs> it is where the wild things were, where the wild things are. In the past tense, we are done with that round. Well, well done, everybody. Let's take a look at the scores after that first round. Oh, don't. Andy, your traditional slow start. <laughs> <That's pretty nice. laughs> I wouldn't nice. want to break with tradition no, and no, exactly. upset the apple cart. Exactly. People, okay. people at home like to know what they're watching. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, Phil, you have one point. Kate, you have three points. We have an early leader, and it is Mr Ivo Graham. Four yeah. points. <laughs> Let's take a look. What's round two going to be today? Oh, it is... Dear. Dim sums. Oh, Dim sums. No, this no. is... <laughs> <laughs> There you are, you see. You don't even know what it is and you're saying, is it, well, is it anything to do with maths? It might, only a tiny bit. I'm the but worst. The, here's the good news, though. This is a pairs game. Oh, So yay. The person in last place... <laughs> <laughs> Traditionally me. ..gets to choose their partner. Uh, I'm being told by the authorities <laughs> that today's Andy Oliver is in oh. last place. <laughs> uh, Andy, who would you like to be paired with in this room? Um, well, traditionally, I go with the person winning, so I'm going to choose you, Ivo. You go with Ivo. Hello. Ivo and Phil, if you will change places. I... Andy Where teamed up with Phil Surely yesterday. Surely they taught you maths. Hi, Phil oh, Jupiter. Hi. Great hey, pleasure. Lovely. <laughs> lovely to meet you. <laughs> Worst. OK, here's what we're going to do. We'll start with you, uh, Kate and Phil. I'm going to show you four categories. You're going to choose from one of these, please. And they are... Strictly Come Dancing, Christmas, Ball Sports, Jane Austen. Do you I, think I, Christmas? I, I go, you go with... Absolutely, you go with Christmas. Christmas, please. Christmas, OK. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And this is the sum you're going to have to complete. Something minus something else equals zero. Mm -hmm. OK? You know how mm -hmm. to fit in that sum using two of the facts I'm about to show you. Oh. OK? Yep. Here are the facts. The number of reindeer named in the Clement Clark Moore poem known as Twas the Night Before Christmas. So that's Santa's reindeer. Yep. The number of films in the Home Alone series, that's according mm -hmm. to IMDb. The number of different instances a group with Band-Aid in their name has recorded the song Do They Know It's Christmas. And the highest ever position in the UK singles chart of Wizards, I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day. Now, all of the answers there are numbers, and two of those numbers will make that sum. Something minus something else equals zero. Two of those answers will give you that sum. I'm immediately thinking Home Alone Band-Aid. That's what I was thinking as well. What do, you, what do you think the numbers are in those? I think it's three and three, but, um, mm. yeah, I think there were three. And, and I think three, there were three versions, versions of Band-Aid. Band 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 so you're going to go with Home Alone minus yeah. Band-Aid. Yes. Um, so how many films were there in the Home Alone series? Let's fill that in in the sum. Oh! oh what? what? Films. There got to have been, were there? Yeah. No. Uh, and how many... So you need there to be five no, versions no. of Band-Aid for this no, to work. No. Were there? Ooh. Four Ooh. versions of Band-Aid. What was the correct sum there? It's going to be Reindeer and Home Alone, isn't it? Versions of Band-Aid and I wish it could be Christmas every day, both How about four. That? Oh, there you are. Um, Ivo and Andy, I need a category from you. <laughs> yeah, I'm up for ball sports. Yeah, we'll do ball, ball sports. sports. Ball sports. OK, ball sports. Here's your sum. Which of these two clues will fit in that sum? Number of people in a men's <laughs> lacrosse team. Oh. You should know that. That's quite... <laughs> that, yeah, you should that's know bit, that. That's a bit eaten <laughs> isn't it? That's Isn't a that bit, a bit eaten That's a bit yeah. eaten yeah. yeah. A little bit. I like that. Lacrosse. Uh, in football, the number of yards between the penalty spot and the goal. Or you. The number of points in basketball for scoring from outside the semicircle. And the number of players in a baseball team. I reckon it's about seven in a lacrosse team and about ten in a baseball team, I, I would say. So, points in basketball, I reckon that you probably get about three. Yes, I reckon so it's the points go, well, in basketball. Points in basketball and players in a baseball team. But you sure baseball? Because uh, I, I love no, lacrosse. lacrosse now. Let's go lacrosse. Um, basketball points plus lacrosse team. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look. How many points do you get for shooting from or from scoring outside the semicircle in basketball? You get three. You get three. So you need there to be ten players on a men's lacrosse team to get yourself. It's a too point. many. It's too many. Too many. It's too many. How many Maybe players eight, are there on a men's lacrosse team? It's eight, I think. <laughs> ten oh, players. Yay! Well <laughs> yay! Yeah. Well, yay! We've all learned something there, haven't, haven't we? Which we? is how many players there are on a lacrosse team. <laughs> ten <laughs> plus three equals so thirteen. Very well done. If you got that, home, you have three points for uh, outside the semicircle in basketball. Oh, I'm off zero now. Ooh.
Uh, players on a baseball team, nine and yards between penalty spot and the goal, 12 yards. Um, Ivo and Phil, if you swap back now, please, oh. gents. And let's take a look at what that has done to the scores. After two rounds on Tuesday's House of Games, Ooh. Andy and Phil both with one point. Kate, you have three points. Ivo still in the lead, five points. Without further ado, let's go on to round three. And today, that is... Z to A. In this round, we put up three clues at a time and we reveal the letters to those clues, one letter at a time, backwards from Z to A. We need the connection between the three clues. Buzz in when you see the connection. What's the connection between these three words? We reveal them letter by letter from Z going all the way up to A. What's the connection between these? Yes, Phil. They're Coldplay songs. Are they Coldplay songs? Uh, fix You. Uh, yeah. Of course they are. Fix You Yellow and Viva La Vida. Well played. Here's your next one. What's the um, connection between these three clues? <laughs> yes, Kate. Oh, salads. Are they all salads? Oh. They are Panzanella, Waldorf and Caesar. Oh. You got that home, well done. You got it before Kate. Here are your next clues. What connects them? That bottom one's a long one. Yes, Kate. Uh, cities in Canada. We can't take it, I'm afraid. It's open again for anyone else. Phil. It's states in... provinces in Canada. Yes, we'll give you that. Provinces in Canada, Phil. Well done. That's unlucky, Kate. Quebec, Ontario and Saskatchewan. Here's your next one. What uh, connects these three clues? I'd love it if someone buzzed in now. Yes, Kate. Type of bicycles. Oh, are they types oh, of bicycle? Oh, that's good. Of course they are. Penny <laughs> Farthing, <laughs> BMX and Tandem. Well done. Marvellous. Here's your next one. What connects these three? Ivo. Horror movies. Ho is it horror movies? Yeah. Saw, Scream, Halloween. It is. Saw, Scream, yeah. Halloween. Well done. What is the connection between these three clues, please? Oh, I need to get this, Phil. Oh, they're Wombles. <laughs> are they Wombles? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Tobamori and Orinoco. Oh, very close to saying children's television programmes. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Which oh, because of like Balamori and, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. saw the Ori and then, whoo! They're all Wombles. Well done if you said that at home. Here's your next one. Phil. Uh, it's uh, bingo callers numbers. Yes, it is bingo calls. Well played. Uh, we've got every single letter there. Wow. Here's your final question in this round. Yes, Phil. Crisps. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're going for. Uh, it's not, I'm afraid. Anyone else? <laughs> Yes, Ivo. Um, they are musical oh. notes. The lengths of lengths of um, beats. I know what you mean. Come like on, mus in musical, the music. Musical, musical notes. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Quaver, semi brief watch it. Now, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. That is. You and I, sir, that's, that's the difference between a comprehensive school education and going to eat <laughs> right there. Is that we see QUVR, we're like, we quaver. Uh, whereas Ivo, who I assume has had violin lessons. Right there. <laughs> this suddenly became class war. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a crotchet is what I call two quavers when I eat them. <laughs> oh, lovely. That's nice. <laughs>
<laughs> I, love, I love the fact that so many people at home would have got crisps. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was everybody. looking for Monster Munch <laughs> right there. <laughs> looking for Monster Munch. That would be a good... Kate Humble looking for Monster Munch. <laughs> would be a really <laughs> good <laughs> BBC Two documentary Wouldn't series. That be amazing? I would watch that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, a good round there. Great round for Kate. Let's take a look at what it's done to the scores. Andy uh, has one point. Five points for Kate and for Phil, and still in the lead, seven points, Mr Ivo Graham. Mm -hmm. You're maintaining this lead, Ivo. I bet I'm, I'm very aware of what people in the industry call the creep of Jupiter. <laughs> 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 Two rounds to go. What is round four going to be today? It is... Where is Kazakhstan? This is played on your tablets, please. I'm going to show you a map on your tablets. I'm going to ask Brilliant. you a series of questions you have to find on the map where the answer is. Here's today's map, a map of Europe. Here's the first thing I need you to mark on your map. The volcano which erupted in 79 AD, burying the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Where was that volcano? So do you know what it was? And if you do, do you know where? Um, is everyone locked in? Yep. We will start with Kate. What country were you thinking? Uh, Italy. Italy. And where have you gone? Let's see where Kate has put her mark. Down at the bottom of Italy there. Ivo, do you know the volcano? I believe it was Mount Vesuvius. Mm. Yes. But I and don't know where it is in Italy. Oh, yeah, I've gone Italy you as think well. It's in Italy. You've gone Italy as well. I went halfway up. There you are. Andy, where did you think this Italy. was? Italy. Excellent. We're all in Italy. Where in Italy have you gone? Um, sort of about uh, near where Ivo is, actually, in the middle there somewhere. I mean, I have no idea where it was, maybe, so I just stuck it in the middle. A little bit further up. We're absolutely covering Italy. Mm. No Italy left. Mm. Phil, have you gone Italy? Bay of Naples, isn't it? Um, Vesuvius, oh, so it's down where Pompeii hot. was. So it's in the middle on the... Uh, about half, two-thirds of the way down on the um, west coast. <laughs> There he is, down there. Now, I mean, listen, listen, it is in Italy. Normally we do this round, people are all over the place. Yes. Like hundreds of thousands of miles away. I think you're all pretty close. It is Vesuvius. That is in Italy. It is in the Bay of Naples. So the big question now is where is the Bay of Naples? Yes. And who is closest? Well, it's should we take a little look at where Vesuvius is? I mean, I'm going to give every single person a point. For that, I think, because we never, everyone's so close. So, a point to everybody there. Very well done. Well done if you got that at home as well. Let's take a look at your next question. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. The birthplace of Mother Teresa. Hmm, what do you think at home? Don't forget to put your finger on the TV screen. Point to where you think it is. Where's Mother Teresa born? It's a tricky one, isn't it? It's, it's, it's... Yeah, um, well, I'm not confident, but I'm, I know rough area, so mm. let's just pick It's a... one of those ones you feel like you should know, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I must know where Mother Teresa was born. Oh, you know. Uh, Ivo, we will start with you. So, two questions. Firstly, where do you... In your head, where do you think Mother Teresa was born? I, I just don't know. And I've gone... But I've, I, I think it's somewhere Mediterranean. OK. So, I've gone with uh, Greece. Let's take a look. Yeah, so in Greece. Andy, in your head, where, where was Mother Teresa born? I, I, I thought Greece at one point, and then I thought, no, maybe she was German or something. And then I realised I didn't know where either of those were. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought, let's say she's English. So I just <laughs> went like that and pulled it down a bit. OK, she went like that and pulled it down a bit. <laughs> let's see where Andy has gone. Where is that? So you are sort Germany? of... German. Yeah, German. It is Germany. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wowza. Mother Teresa. Yeah, Mutter Mutter Teresa, lovely. <laughs> Mutti. Phil, you thought you might have an inkling. I think she's Bulgarian. Ah. And then the big question but, is, <laughs> yeah, where's but, Bulgaria? And then, of course, but and and, yeah. and of course, I I believe I've now uh, gone for um, Belarus or somewhere. I don't know. That's Romania. Romania. So that's not. That's pretty. Actually, yeah. Might accidentally be right there. Yeah. <laughs> Kate, what did you think the answer was? Well, I thought she was Polish. I had an inkling she was Polish, but I think I don't know if that's right. No, I don't know whether it's right. And, and now, looking at the map up there, I'm thinking that where I put Poland is not right either. OK, let's see so where... altogether has put disaster. Belarus. Oh, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so we've got Germany, we've got Belarus, we've got Romania, 
And Greece. Greece. And we got Greece. Now, I'll tell you where she was born. North Macedonia. Oh. Oh. Was she? Now, my understanding is that's not a million miles from Greece, but also not a million miles from... Oh, it's exciting. From Romania. From Romania. Let's see, where was Mother Teresa born? Where's North Macedonia? Oh, yeah. Ivo. Ivo. I've got to give that to you. Just good. north of Greece. Well done. Oh, I like Ivo. Thank you. Uh, here is your last one in this round. Here's what we're looking for now. The place oh. from which Christopher Columbus set sail for the New World in August 1492. Huh. Hmm. I mean, I have an inkling, uh, Phil, you'll tell me if I'm wrong here, that it was coastal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I you think... don't mean his house to get oh, to the boat? Yeah, exactly, yeah, where to do you? <laughs> <laughs> Andy, just waiting for... OK, I'm you just in? doing that. I... Lovely. Uh, Andy, we will start with you. What did you think the answer was? Was, he, was it Spain? So you thought Spain? I thought Spain and then I thought, but then and I got very confused and I've gone over here, which I think is Let's France. Let's take a look at where I think Andy I've gone to France. Spain. I got confused. I mean, if he sits out from France, you are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, in your brain, where did he sit out from? Um, 1492. I don't know what Spain's relationship with Portugal was like. Either at war having recently conquered or... Uh, you know, maybe they had some sort of treaty with Por the Portuguese. So you thought Portugal? I thought, I thought maybe Portugal. Portugal. I thought it was either pa Spain or Portugal. Yeah. I think I'd have gone so for I, Portugal. So I popped it halfway up Portugal, oh. not too far. <laughs> oh, I'll just pop this halfway up Portugal for you. You're like a delivery guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry you're out. I popped your pass yeah. halfway up Portugal. Not too far from Faro. You know. Let's have a look at Phil's dot. There he is, Portugal. Um, Kate, what do you think the answer was? I've put him kind of Malaga direction, but southern okay. Spain. Let's see where Kate has gone. Lovely, kind of Malaga-esque. Uh, and Ivo, what were you thinking the answer was? I'll come clean. Thought he was British. <laughs> so... Uh, really? <laughs> yes. Columbus? Yes. Really? One of the woking Columbuses. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, um, uh, but then I thought maybe he's European, so I just popped popped him in the channel just to, to hedge my bet. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we take a little look? He set sail from uh, Palos de la Frontera in Spain. Ah. Uh, but I would still say it could still be between uh, Kate and Phil, depending on where that is. Let's take a look. Where is Palos de la Frontera? Oh, it's exactly oh, okay. on where Kate Humble was. Kate Humble wins a point. Very well played. We have one round to go on Tuesday's House of Games. Let's take a look at the scores going into that round. Andy, you have two points. Phil, six points. Kate in second with seven. Ivo still in the lead. Nine points. <laughs> the last round, as always, is... After Smash, which is what's going to decide today's prize. Three of you are in it, I would say. Andy, you may come back. I don't think there's enough questions. <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget, in this round, you get a point for a right answer and you lose a point for an incorrect oh, answer. Oh, yes, I mustn't forget So that. if the three of them... No, you've just got to buzz in. <laughs> but if the three of them buzz in and get stuff wrong, who knows? <laughs> Suddenly... Oh, yes. You never know. We're going to show you a picture. We'll show you a clue underneath it. Smash the answers together uh, and give us that answer, please. Here is your first category. And it is comedians. Those will be oh, the God. pictures. There'll be a clue underneath. Smash the answers together, please. Very best of luck. Which song from the Thrupney Opera was a UK number one for Bobby Darren in 1959? That is Ivo. Uh, Lee Mack, The Knife. Is that right? It is Lee Mack, The Knife. Lee Mack, Mac The Knife. Uh, good answer. Well played. Here's your next one. Who's this comedian? What's the answer to this clue? Which US group had UK top 40 hits in 1998 with Intergalactic and Body Moving? Uh, yes, Ivo. Um, uh, Ashling B52. Uh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Incorrect, I'm afraid. Phil. Ashling Beastie Boys. Is it Ashling Beastie Boys? It is Ashling B and the Beastie Boys. <laughs> Ivo, you lose a point there. Who is this comedian and what's the answer to this clue, please? It is super close now. Which classic cocktail is typically made with tequila, triple sec and lime juice? 
Ivo. Nishku Margarita. Is the right answer, Ivo Graham. Well done, Nishku Mar <laughs> Margarita. Um, here's your next category. French food. Those will be the pictures. Which 1980 spoof disaster film stars Leslie Nielsen as Dr. Rumac? <laughs> yes, Phil. A clear plane. <laughs> oh, of course it is. A clear plane. Well done, she said that at home. Here's your next one. Here's your food and here's your clue. Which Scottish presenter, one of the early hosts of GMTV, was awarded an OBE in 2012? <laughs> yes, Andy. Keish Lorraine Kelly. Is it Keish Lorraine Kelly? There we go. That's your first answer, Smash Andy. How does it that is feel? It's my first answer, Smash. Excellent. <laughs> Anyone can win. Good. Keish Lorraine Kelly. Well, I don't know if you said that at home. Here's your next one. What's this food and what's this clue? Grace and Favour was a spin off of which British sitcom? <laughs> yes, Phil. Ta ta, you being served. Oh, my God. We will take that. It is steak oh, ta ta, oh, you oh, being oh, served. Oh, well oh. done. Um, here's your next category. Film directors, you see a picture of a film director. Smash it together with this clue, please. Which popular saying featuring two farm animals is used to refer to a ridiculous or implausible tale, Phil? Alfred Hitchcock and Bull Story. Is that right? Of course it's right. Alfred Hitchcock and Bull Story. Alfred Hitchcock and Bull Story. Here's your next film director. Swedish group Rednecks achieved a UK number one with which song in 1995? Phil. Ridley Scott and I Joe. Ridley Scott Cotton and oh. I Joe is the right answer. <laughs> Here's your next film director, your next crew. <laughs> there are no more now. He's won. That's super close, I think. Who has won Tuesday's House of Games? <laughs> Phil by oh. one point. Oh. Phil Judas is our winner. <laughs> Ivo threw it away. Threw it away. That's what we call what we call in the business a bottle job there from Ivo Graham. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great performance there, Phil, in that last round. <laughs> Andy, three points. Kate, seven points. Ivo, ten. Phil, Jupiter, another win. Phil, are you okay, Ivo? No. I had Ashling Beastie Boys just there. Oh. <laughs> And, you let it go. And I've let down hey. my family, but I've also let down the hip-hop community. <laughs> 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 Phil, congratulations. Two wins in a row. And that means two prizes in a row as well. What are you going to go with? I'm going with the apron because uh, that cheese splashes when it comes oh, out. Oh, yeah. Uh, Essentially, you've got yourself a fondue apron. Those gloves are quite lovely. handy with the fondue, actually. I know, but how hot do you want your cheese? <laughs> <laughs> Phil, Jupiter. <laughs> Phil Jupiter takes home uh, the House of Games apron. Shall we look at the weekly leaderboard? Oh, do we have See to? where we are. We do, I'm afraid, Kate. Yeah. Uh, Andy, you have two points. Kate, okay. four. Ivo, six. And Phil up there with eight points. We'll take those points through to Wednesday's show. What a pleasure once again. We've had two lovely days. Uh, I'll see you back here again, same time, same place tomorrow. We'll see you as well on the House of Games. <laughs> I think I'd have gone for the decanter, Phil. <laughs>